is home, but I never really thought there was anything special about living in Kentucky until I found music here, and there is a lot of music here. I didn't start going to shows until I was in high school, but even then it didn't all click for me until my first house show, which was at this place called The Wet Basement, and I'm assuming it's called that because it was sweaty as hell and it was in a basement. Essentially, if you were downstairs, you were in the mosh pit, and the entire room felt like one swirling organism. At one point, this girl fell down and I helped pick her up, and she gave me a kiss on the cheek and said thank you, I love you, and took my hand and ran back into the sea of people with me, and I remember thinking that was the most beautiful moment I'd ever been a part of. After that night, I pretty much wanted to go to every show I could find, which in Louisville is like four a week. So that's basically how I've spent the past three years, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The Midwest gets overlooked a lot, and I think it's seen as a kind of cultural dead zone. But Louisville has a lot to offer, and I don't think it's going to stop growing. The city's small enough to have a strong, supportive community, but big enough to be open to creative diversity and change. There's a constant flow of punk, hardcore, bluegrass, rap, kraut rock, bedroom pop, anything you could think of, somebody's messing with it here. So I filmed some of it. It's 2019, right? Yes. Okay, uh... Yeah, it started in like 2016. It was mostly like a solo project. The idea originally was like me, Bird Dog, and then the Coyote Gospel Choir was like my loop pedal. But then like slowly started expanding to like a group of musicians. We're putting out an album in the next month or two called uh, God Blessed Us with $10,700. God Blessed Us with $10,700. And it's uh, all pretty much improv jams. The theme it's is gotta be animal based, isn't yeah, it? It's animal based, yeah. Uh, we have the duck song, the snake song, the rat song, and the newt song. Duck, snake, rat, newt. You see, the whole thing about the duck song is uh, there's an old idiom, an old uh, saying, you know, uh, a duck with green onions. Which, uh, you know, you think about like traditional um, duck stew. Duck soup, it always has green onions in it. And so the idiom is like basically saying, like, the duck is the fool walking into an unfortunate situation and he's got the green onions with him. A duck with green onions. Honestly, a duck with green onions. A duck with green onions. A leek is a pretty, like, similar substitute for green onions. Though. Okay. Yeah. I personally love the scene here. We all just seem to have fun. Great. and we're all very supportive of each other. New bands are always coming in there all the time. There are bands who are still here doing their thing, and we just, you know, we just like to have a wild time. I drank Listerine today. <laughs> yeah, I almost wanted to say that. I also yeah. drank Listerine today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we played at the Mammoth with Malusia Speedball uh, a few months ago, and they just like threw bags of leaves on uh, to the crowd for them to like beat up and tear apart. Well, that was pretty crazy, honestly. The the main is a great venue. Uh, there's like this outdoors, it's like you really get like really messy with it. You know, if it's interesting for the band, it's gotta be interesting for the like people watching you. So yeah. it's like if we're making good stuff at home, you know, we should bring it out to the stage. I came to Louisville uh, about three years ago for the music scene. There's definitely like a humongous supportive community, you know, especially the past like year or so. Um, there's just been like shows exploding off the, like the charts, you know, like a bunch of so many like local bands and so many like musicians from like around the state and this and the county and the city. Everybody just like making really awesome music and like <laughs> like like presenting it to people. Okay, hold on just a second. I gotta make sure everything's focused and stuff. And you all need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that adds to the vibe already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what distinguishes it from a normal, from just like an, an, an My legs are burnt. My name's Connor, I've been going to shows for about five years now. I started out when I was in high school, so I got Instagram. <laughs> I had all these like people following me that I didn't know and a bunch of
bunch of them were like in, in the scene and it, I started hearing about these like local shows. I first saw Boner City at Spinelli's and I absolutely hated it. I was like, if this is what this scene is, I'm not going to get into this scene. I'm probably just going to go to my friend's shows. That's where I thought it would end for me. But that band actually ended up being one of my favorite bands ever to come out of not just Louisville's anywhere, but it was it was a really fun night. On my 18th birthday, they played a show at uh, Gonzo House, which is also no longer a place. They actually sang Happy Birthday to me at the end, and some of my friends in the scene had brought out a cupcake, which was really special. But yeah, that that's one show that will always stick out. About a month ago, Bird Dog uh, posted. He, he said he wanted to start a band, and he was looking for like a horn player. And I said I'd play sax, and that's kind of how that got started. So I, I went over to Pelican Kingdom, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna." Bird Dog's like, "Yeah, we're recording." And I'm like, "We, we have we didn't have anything written." So the entire first album is improvised. It's capped off with a cover of Ocean Man. There's, there's definitely different crowds. I mean, there's the punk scene and, you know, the hardcore scene. And there's a lot of, I mean, there is a lot of overlap. I really appreciate the community that I've found. But I just, I really love how we have so much overlap between the different sub-scenes within the broader music scene in Louisville. And I think it's really cool how people are willing to do some really interesting mixed build shows. My name is Hudson Bissell, and um, I started playing music uh, freshman year of high school. Uh, I was in a post-hardcore band called Marigold, and um, after that I, uh, I was roommates with uh, my friend Mike, and uh, he just started freestyle rapping, and uh, I would start just, you know, playing a uh, little, little hand drum djembe with him, and we had this idea that we could start playing rap, but with live instruments. And um, so I, I play the drum set, and I said, "Hey, man, if you uh, you know just get better at rapping, take some uh, vocal lessons and whatnot, and um, I'll play the drum set with you." And uh, so it kind of started from there, and it and it and it started real small. You know, we played really small shows, and uh, mainly the Lexington scene. One of our first shows, we played with this band called Dad Shorts. And their drummer was about to move to Atlanta, so you know we played a good set. And and after the set, they uh, came up to me and they were like, "Hey, you know our drummer's moving out of town, and uh, if you want to play drums with us, we'd we'd love you to join." So the whole Mike Bandana thing has been awesome for me because I I'm able to pursue another side of music that I'm into, and I. I met a whole other group of friends with dad shorts. You know, we're, we're fortunate enough to play with rappers, with uh, just every genre band. And, and it's awesome that in, in Lexington and all these scenes, even other genre bands just really support each other. As I'm graduating now, <clears throat> I've had opportunities already in around Chicago um, and in all areas of the country, but music is kind of grounding me here. You know, right now, I don't want to leave these bands, you know, and I've had these opportunities to, to move elsewhere in the country, but, but right now I, I just, I love what's happening here in Louisville, uh, especially, and, and also just what's going on in Cincinnati, what's going on in Lexington. Um, so yeah, I would say the main thing that is keeping me around this area is music, and I don't think I'm ready to, to leave that yet. Um, I think we'll find a time where, you know, alright, let's move to Atlanta, let's move to Chicago or something, but right now, this little scene, there's something happening here, and I, I definitely want to stay a part of that. Hi, I'm Ethan Wallace, uh, playing Dana Ives. Uh, we're from New Orleans, Louisiana, and this is our third day on tour. It's our second show. Um, and we just finished playing the Spinelli's Pizza Pizza, pizza, pizza Pie Parlor. Um, it was amazing. So much fun. Uh, I was really impressed. The community here is incredible. Everyone comes out to these shows, and 
so supportive and hang out and dancing and it's something well, unfortunately don't see a lot in a lot of other cities so uh, it's a pretty special place and I, it's my first time here and I hope it's not my last. The first time I saw Zerg Rush was at this legendary house show called M Street. And the M Street house show was fucking insane. People were going through windows, shit was being knocked over, like the front porch was completely trash, it was glass everywhere, everything was just fucking destroyed. That house show was my first local show. And I'm really proud to say that, honestly. <laughs> for, I heard Zerg Rush for the first time that night, and that was in September of 2017. And I was like, oh god, these guys fucking rock. And then like five-ish months, four-ish, five-ish months later in March was when I got a call from Brett to say, hey, um, Dylan is not making it to any practices. Do you want to sit in for a Zerg Rush show? And I was like, oh my God, I've been waiting for this moment my entire life. So I sat in with him and it was just, it was just an instant click. Like I knew exactly what I needed to do because I was listening to a lot of like beachy rock stuff since Zerg Rush got me in that mood when I first listened to him. I was like, man, they don't have any music out or anything, but I really enjoy the beachy, surfy vibes that they have. And they were just like, yeah, we're not going to let you go. <laughs> and I couldn't have, I, would, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, but when I started playing drum set in my sophomore year was when I made my first band, Trouble on Two Feet, who's still going strong. <laughs> so we started that. It was terrible. It was really bad. Because we started as just like, we would do covers of rock songs and stuff that people knew. And we started to branch out and we're like, hey, we should write our own music. And that's when Kyle started going to like local shows and stuff. I wish I would have gone to local shows around the time that Kyle did because I would have been able to see Boner City. But I, that's probably my greatest regret, not being able to see Boner City. I really hope they do come back, honestly. Me and Kyle talk about it often, me and Zani talk about it often, me and Brett talk about it, like, oh, there's a lot of people I talk to about it, and it's like, I can almost feel that Louisville is going to be how Seattle was in the 90s, but for this 2020s that are coming up, and it's exciting, it really is, because we're right on the edge of that iceberg, Girlwood's getting up there, Bo is getting up there, like, all those grunge bands that came up, they knew exactly what they wanted, they know what sound they wanted, they were dedicated, so they made it. I can't wait to see any of these, all these other bands, all these friends that I have that are going to be up there at the top of us making it. The problem is reaching out to people who don't necessarily listen to this type of music, you know? Being in Zerg Rush for, re for like a year, it's really hard to narrow down exactly what Zerg Rush is. Because like we're a surf party punk, but we have this outer spacey theme to it, and like there's just so much, there's so much going on with the sound that we have. What we want to do is branch out to all those people who don't typically listen to that type of stuff. Not to turn them on to it, but to show them what else is out there. I think that's what all local bands are doing, honestly. Like, there, there's a lot of stuff that's coming up here. There's a lot of excitement, and there's a lot of music that's coming out, and there's a lot of people with great ideas. And I think everybody should just branch out and go for it. Because you never know what you like until you try it, right? There's just so much good music and there's so much potential here. It's like, oh, like what, what Girlwood said, when Girlwood at the album release, it made me so happy and so ecstatic when they said this. They were like, yeah, we just got back up from New York and they're saying, hey, when are you guys going to move up here? And we said, nah, man, fuck that. You guys got to come down here and get us. And I was just like, yeah, bring those motherfuckers down here. Oh, because you, if you get some of those dudes who are trying to sign Girlwood, or trying to sign other bigger bands in the scene and they hear stuff like like Happy You, they hear stuff like Zerg Rush and they hear stuff that's a little bit like it's a step down but it still has the same energy and all that like it, it there's no way they're just gonna be like oh, we don't want it. It, it there's just no way there's always something else out there
Is now an okay time? It's a perfect time. Awesome. In terms of music and social being, um, my life changed when I turned 21 just because I found out that there was this whole like Louisville music scene I didn't know about. When I first moved to Louisville, I was like 20, I think. And I was like, huh, I never really hear about shows. All I hear about is like house shows. But then I realized like, oh, I'm just like not old enough to get into all of like all that there is. So, I mean, that changed for me when I became of age. We've always talked about how it's very important to never, never like just ditch Louisville or leave Louisville. I think a lot of bands oftentimes, um, once they, once they make it big or once they see success, um, they quickly leave Louisville and they quickly just stop playing shows in Louisville altogether. And that's a machine that we don't want to be a part of because Louisville is great. It's always been great to us and we always want to be great to them. And I think Louisville, um, culturally, it's just a great city. It's very, very diverse. Um, it's cheap to live here. It's very accessible to many people. We really like Louisville. It's a weird, awesome city full of a lot of personality. I would definitely say Louisville is home. Are you all like surprised by how receptive people have been? Absolutely. And of course, with the reception, there are the people who shit on Girlwood too. And um, to me, that's not surprising. When people shit on Girlwood, I'm just like, oh, well, good. Like, I'm glad that you don't fucking like us. Like, fuck you, I don't want you to like us. You don't fucking matter. Yeah, that's uh, not why we're getting it. And right. If I'm playing to a room of no one and just by myself, I'm gonna have just as much fun doing that as if we can in our rehearsal space by ourselves. Because that's really what I'm doing it for. And if a bunch of people see what I'm doing, I really don't care. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to have fun with Karen. I feel like when we write music, it's never really thinking like, oh yeah, we're gonna play at this place and they're gonna be like, hurrah, you know? It's more so like, yeah, I really like this and you really like this, what we're playing right now and we're really enjoying it and then we'll do something with it after. But right now we're focusing on like this here now, like between us and not really, I feel like not really much else, you know? Girl, what is like my outlet and like my diary and it's like how I express myself. And that's why I make music, and if people resonate with that, and I can make a living off of it, that's awesome. But that is not the goal. The goal is just to like have that healthy outlet in which I can, in which I can express myself. Your song is like this child, and you watch how the crowd reacts to it. They either like it or maybe they don't care for it. But there's still like something very like there's very there's something very special about like the birth of it and like playing by ourselves and like creating but there's also like such an amazing feeling like putting it out there too to see like what do people think of it because sometimes you make something amazing between yourselves and you show it to the rest of the world and they're like oh whatever you know um, yeah. you know there's some songs don't translate live the same way they do a on a recording or b like when it's just the two of you in a room, you know? Yeah, it, it's really interesting when you write a new piece and you think, okay, I like this. And on paper, I think it'll work. But you really don't understand how that song's gonna play over it until you play it live in front of people. And no, no, no two crowds are the same ever. I mean, we play a lot of shows, so obviously we love performing. Um, there's definitely nothing like watching people dance to your music or even people like, you know, fucking going ape shit in a pit to your music. It's definitely a very special feeling. Get yourself out of your comfort zone and go to some shows of some bands you've never heard of or never listened to and don't just go to the same genre type of shows because I think that's just so lame. And be open-minded and don't, don't trash, don't, don't take time out of your day to trash people who are creating music out here for no reason. That's just so childish. And support your fucking music scene by like going out and seeing different things. Leave your comfort zone every now and then. Yeah, I would say uh, believe in yourself and everybody starts somewhere. If you're like looking at other people and comparing yourself and the dreams you want to achieve, just know that everyone starts somewhere and that, yeah, believe in yourself and do what you want. 
Have a good time. Believe it and do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else. All right. Well, we're we're uh, we're the happy. Yeah. I don't know. We're doing the thing, dude. Yeah, where's the bucket? What kind of thing, EJ? Hey, EJ. EJ. Dude, we've been playing uh -oh. since um don't worry. since we were 14. <laughs> no, it's fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. The band started in October of 2016. It was Jack and E. And I he's joined, not here today because yeah. he's up in, uh, in he New went York up, City. For, but he's he still in the band. Yeah, he went yeah. up. Yeah. He comes. He's gonna come down uh, over Christmas break and over uh, summer break. And, and, then, and then eventually, when yeah. the when the clock strikes twelve, they will vanish in the moon. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so I, I started playing guitar um, around the time the band started, like maybe a month or two before. So all I knew is how to play like basic open chords. What if we're in hell and our perception of heaven is just earth? Yeah. Anyway. So I joined in November and we wrote like a song and practiced once and then they kicked me out because I had to miss the first show. That's, that's true. That's, yeah. that's true. We were 14 and we started by playing folk punk. So we just had like acoustic guitars and nothing else. Like, you missed the first show. You're out of the band. That's what, <laughs> that's what, we, that's what we did though. We, we, got a, we got a drummer and a bassist and electric guitars and then started playing with, uh, with those things and developing our sound. So this is pretty much, at least for Brooks and I, been our high school experience. Yeah. Because um, again, started when you we were 14. I'm 17 now, he's 18. Started when you we were a freshman, and we're seniors in high school now. Um, he's a freshman in college. Johnny, Johnny's a working man. Soph sophomore in college. Wow. Sophomore. You just called him a freshman. The local music scene is really a special thing, I think. There's a really rich, like, hardcore history here. Like, one of the biggest bands, biggest hardcore bands from Louisville right now, at least, is Knock Loose. Yeah. Um, Slint is one of the bands that put Louisville on the map. Like, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite experiences has been, like, one time we played with, we played at Spinelli's with a band called Round Eye, and they're from, like, China. And they said that, like, out of their whole tour, this was the place, this was the place that popped up the most. <laughs> like, like, we, played, like, we played at a bar, uh, the Careless Lounge, and there was a band um, called... What us. it was called? What was the fucking band? Peachy. This band Peachy, called Peachy. Yeah. Peachy. They were they were they were sick. They were one of the yeah. coolest bands that we've seen. Literally, was Jack was like, Jack was like, this band's from Nashville. I was like, that is. It was one of my like, like favorite shows that I've seen locally. Um, and they they we talked to them. I I talked to them after they said because I was like, I'd love you guys to come back and play the show with us, like an all ages kind of thing. Because it was at a bar and there weren't a lot of kids there because. Let's see yeah, this. 21 and up. Oh, Kind of yeah. can't say yeah. alcohol. Um, yeah. So, but this band, they said that like this kind of thing doesn't happen in Nashville, and that was at a show with hardly any people. So, I don't know. Nashville apparently doesn't have like a good fucking punk scene, like, which is shocking. To me. Um, but like they said that Louisville, Kentucky was one of the like best stops that they've had, which it's like that's they gigged a couple hey, of places. Hey, maybe this is pretty fucking to be honest. I don't think I'm given like the Louisville scene enough credit. Maybe this is like, no, like a lot of people show up these. Days. You choose yeah, now to have this like realization. I, yeah. Uh -huh. I just What's up, y'all? Hey, hey, hey. Spencer's here. He was in, he was in, uh, he's in Bird, Bird Dog. Yeah. The yeah. Dirt Bog. Bird Bog. The Bird Bog. The Bird Bog. The Bird Bog. The Bird Evan was telling me even, he was, because we had a, we were talking, there's a, there's a lot of, like, drama that can happen in the scene, which is what yes. happens when a bunch of teenagers get together. Yeah. Um, but, for sure. I, yeah. Um, but I was talking to him about, like, the scene in Cincinnati. But, like our guitarist? Evan Z Zerg Rush. Oh. Sin. Oh, Evan Williams. Yeah, he's from like Brandenburg. Yeah, well... What? What? Yeah, what's Brandenburg? Anyway, he was like, there's still a scene there, but it's nothing like this. Which is like... Cool. You know? Yeah. It, like, I've this grown is a up very here. unique scene. Yeah, I've grown up here, so I've kind of taken it for granted. But like, oh yeah, dude, I'm from Utah, and there's literally nothing. Yeah. There's like an indie <laughs> band, and I fucking hate them. You They're all talented, they just write bad songs. <laughs> it's like a whole bunch of like geniuses sit down, 
just do two plus two all the time. It's like, y'all can do better than that. I know y'all. What are you talking about? I'm screwed, I'm screwed, I'm screwed, I'm screwed, I'm screwed, I'm screwed. Okay, usable footage. Take three. Damn it, Brett. Give me a fucking Oreo, you bitch. Somebody say Oreo. Oh my fucking god. It's our interview! Brett plays bass in Zerg Rush. Whoa, dude! Kyle also plays guitar. Who was ripping it tonight? Oh, yeah. Hey, absolutely ripping. Ripping hole tonight. He's played a couple shows with us. Y'all got me on deck. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the sex I, I am the. Uh, we've also. We I'm had, definitely the sex We've had, had, the sex. We've had, we've had Kyle. We've had Kyle play with us before. He's played bass for us. I was at a show and sang for us. Uh, we've had we've had Ethan from Zerg Rush who's come in and been gone. Yeah. He's played he played drums for us for a couple of months while we were going in between drummers. We've had a lot of people come Hazel up. Hazel is like, invited on stage. Yeah, because yeah, we have because Hazel from Hazel Fire come up and solo. This is, the happy year yeah, is more than a something. band; it's a movement. Jonathan it's from the Inverites was in this band. Oh, bro, the Happy Family. Yeah. No, it's the honestly like bro, bro. the Happy Year. It's not even a band. It's like it's a. It's like a fucking lifestyle, bro. It's, it's like a cult. It's a, family. It's a it's very a cult. thickly it shrouded cult, mist. Kinda. It's a cult. You can't it's see who's in it, but there are people in it. For sure. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> they have to use a bloodletting cult, guys. We've like, become we've become like all of our close friends are like in our other bands, so they're talented musicians, and we're like, hey, you want to do this in a show or something? Yeah. And then, yeah. Like, and then yeah. we say, fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck. Fuck yeah. Like, one of my favorite things about like local, I guess, is just like. Playing around. I mean, I like, like at Spinelli's, really where most of the shows are booked, like, that's where I've seen, like, a lot of bands blow up really so quickly. Because, like, people will come to Spinelli's. Yeah, fucking Knock Loose came from Spinelli's. Yeah, yeah, like, people will just blow White up Reaper. there. And then, like, you White have Reaper, set, yeah. And then you have places, like, open that, like, a lot, they'll just, they'll book anybody if you have an act. Like, don't spray um, Yeah, I'll play in some weird places. Like, we're playing in a house venue tonight. We don't usually do that, but, I mean, like, when you get a bunch of punks together, what do you get? But, Sweat. You know, Alcohol. Sweat. But, uh, when you get a bunch of punks together, that's drama. Johnny. Mama, sweat, and Fuck great drama. music! Johnny, open your mouth. No. Oh! oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. How much is it? How much? Is how much? much? Let me show you something. How much? This is the greatest oh, thing about oh, playing in punk bands. Is Let's see how much we got paid for our show tonight. Man, that's a pretty decent amount. $20! Money goes into buying new equipment and shit because we yeah. fuck it up a lot. Yeah. Oh, she got method. Go out of your call. And she got method. That's me. Wait, you just gave Kyle Ray. Get the fuck back. Everyone, Everyone the fucking uh, cap. You every, can't spray it. Every, I, hey, can't, I, hey, don't do that. Kill fucking like stamps. Like kill stamps. No, don't. Okay, I'm gonna walk away. It smells kind of good. Shut up! We are the happy you at Spotify, any major Johnny, we're not platform. done! But not on time. Ah, what do you have to Brooks, say? I want to say something. You're in the hot seat. Okay. Say something. You're, you're in the hot seat. I think that, that girl uh, playing Louisville is really that good. That girl was satisfied. There's something about this city. I mean, the scene in Louisville has such a rich history, you know, like we were talking about earlier. And the fact that we are playing here now with tons of bands before us that have inspired us, like, is all a path up to kind of this scene and what we're doing. It's a movement. It's great. And I think that we really have, like, a lot of fantastic bands to play with. And there are a lot of fantastic bands to go see. And I don't think that enough people go to shows. And I think that a beauty of, like, the scene, I guess, is people can come together and, like, form their own bands. And then just go and have a platform to play. And I think that because of that, there are a lot of really talented individuals and creative people and the scene. Wonderful. Yeah, there's no judgment. It's pretty fun. Expression, yeah. man. Expression, Expression and acceptance. Yeah, like, you, know, you can walk up on stage, like, gargle, spit, and then fart into the mic. And then people will be like, you fucking genius. Had to leave the shop in silence. Had my head hanging way too hard. The things you used to laugh at your friends for are kind of what they be, like, you should, you should be, you know, like, uh, like I'm like, man, you got a wife, you got a house, man, that's, what are you, a dork? But then you're like, damn, like, that's, that's like the order of life, really, you know, like, 
you start to question whether or not you're the fucking goofball because it's the only thing that you really like is this, you know, like, this rules, but, you know, you start questioning yourself, and that's kind of what this song's about, like, maybe it's a fuck up. I was obsessed with music when I was a kid. I was always into it, and I would see bands play, and I was thought that was amazing. And I tried to be in bands, and nobody would have me because I couldn't play an instrument. I don't know, so I didn't have like the connections to just be a singer. And so I got a guitar and learned to play like two chords. And I sucked. I had no clue how to even play guitar or how to strum or anything. And just you know, over time, kind of learned. Oh shit! Let me think. Thirty three. Probably like 10 or 11 years now, um, I started learning to play guitar. Pro I mean, I should be better than I am. <laughs> what a, you know, some people took lessons and stuff. I just, a buddy showed me how to make a G chord. I was like, cool, thanks. First time I went to see a punk rock show, um, I snuck in, I saw the Youth Brigade play at this like crappy little bar. I just sneak in the back door. It was half laundromat, half bar called Sudsy Malone's in Cincinnati, Ohio. And, when I got there, the lead singer was swinging out his rope into the show. And he hit his head with a microphone, it was bleeding everywhere. And everybody was just grabbing each other and singing along. And I was like, immediately, I was like, sold, done. This is all I want to do. I don't care about anything else other than this, you know. <laughs> it's probably everything, you know. It's, it, you meet people with, with the same morals as you, the same ethics. When you just exist and go to work, you almost get put into a system, whether you like it or not, of gather money, gather material things, gather all this shit that you, you assume is what you're supposed to be doing. And when you get involved in the punk rock scene, the DIY scene, that's not the case. <clears throat> you can, you know, meet people that are the same as you. It's all about your experiences and your emotions rather than materialism and things like that. So getting involved in music and getting involved in local music, namely punk rock, was everything to me, you know, because... I didn't have to be, you know, I didn't have to wear fucking khakis. I didn't have to style my hair. I could shave my head and do whatever I wanted because it didn't, you know, they, they were accepting regardless so long as you were on the same kind of ethic, like, moral page as them. And even that was pretty loose, really, <laughs> you know. So, it yeah, it's taught me everything. It's brought me, you know, it's it dictates the decisions I make in everyday life as well, you know, as far as, like, being kind to people, being considerate of other people's, backgrounds, you know, their history and everything. So it's it's one it's the end, the good, you know. <laughs>